Hello again, folks. This is Steve Grisetti, co-founder of MoviePix.com and author of the MoviePix.com guide to Adobe Photoshop Elements. And here we are in Photoshop Elements, part three of our eight-part basic training for Adobe Photoshop Elements. In the last session, we looked at correcting a photo or cleaning up a photo. In this session, I want to talk about selections. And you select areas of a photo for a number of reasons. You select areas of a photo because you want to make adjustments only to that area of a photo. And selecting will protect areas outside that selection. Sometimes we cut the area that we've selected out, paste it into a different picture, paste it into a different background. We can do that with selections also. There are a number of reasons for making selections and a number of very powerful tools for drawing your selection. So we've got this little boy here sitting in an ice cream shop. There are a number of ways we can select him we can select him by, this is just a freehand tool, it's probably the least likely way to do it. But with this freehand lasso tool, you just kind of drag around the outside of his face or around his body here. And I'm doing a pretty sloppy job at it because this is a difficult tool to use precisely. But I usually use freehand at the very end of my selection to kind of clean up because once you've selected, you can improve the selection so we can add to and remove from the selection. In fact, if I were to hold down the shift key, I can add to my selection. I can continue to draw it and get the areas that I missed before. And if I hold down the alt or option key, I can remove from the selection. So if there's something I don't want selected out here, I can draw and cut that off. Now, like I say, freehand selecting is probably the least likely way to do it because as you can see, it's a lot of work to manually make the selection. When you select a number of tools here on the toolbar, if you look down here at tool options underneath or the work area, you'll see that under every tool, there are several other similar tools. There's a polygon tool. So that way you can make your selection by drawing a series of points and having the program connect the dots. Control D to deselect that or Command D. There's a magnetic tool that will follow a color break and it does a really good job of selecting based on the difference between colors. So it kind of automatically helps you out with your selection. We'll just deselect that also, Control D or Command D. There are some magic tools here, quick selection tools. And among them is a magic selector here, the magic wand that if we had an area that was all one color, the magic wand does a great job of selecting an entire space with one click based on the color. So we could hold down the shift key and continue to select areas using that. Not very effective in this case, control D or command D. There are tools here for making quick selections and a selection brush tool that sort of brushes your selection. And I would make that a wider brush to make that more effective. So I'm going to use the bracket key, the bracket open and bracket close will make it wider or more narrow. I've made it wider. Anyway, this is one way you can paint your selection. You select. And then there are tools here for modifying your selection. You can get very, very precise. Once you've made your selection under the select menu, you can choose to reverse the selection and select everything outside of your selection instead of your selection. You can refine edges, you can transform, you can grow your selection or select everything that's of a similar color. But look at this. About halfway down selection is an automatic selection tool. It's going to identify the main subject in your picture and automatically make the selection for you. So if I click that, Look at this, it'll analyze the picture and it selected the boy for me. It's almost done. Now I got a little more than I wanted and then I can go over here to these other tools. And uh, by the way, there's also a rectangular tool and a circular elliptical tool. So you can draw all kinds of selections and remove in a number of ways. In this case, I would probably go over here to my polygon tool and I'd hold down the alt key or the option key and then select the area I want to remove from that selection. And that would help improve the selection. And then I could actually, like I say, I could actually cut the boy out of this picture, paste him into another picture, into another background. And let me control Z or command Z to do that. And in the selection, like I say, we can make changes. If I were to make any changes to this photo, enhance it in any way, increase its color, 
the only thing affected would be the selection. There are a number of reasons to make selections. And like I say, a large portion of the program is dedicated to either making selection or getting into an area where you can actually refine and improve the selection to get little fine details like the curls in somebody's hair. That's pretty advanced, but the program can do it and you can get an extremely precise selection so that you can take your photo work then to the next level, whatever the next step happens to be. Now in part four, we're going to look at cutting and pasting and how you use cutting and pasting to remove objects from one picture, put them in another. And that's a very common thing to do in Photoshop Elements and we're gonna do that in part four. Hope you'll join me.